Hey, I just wanted to record a specific thanks to everyone who's listening and has reached out or contacted me in some form or another. Uh, it's been meaningful, it's been important to me, and I appreciate especially the international context of it all. I, uh, I'm humbled by it, and uh, I just hope that uh, through this sort of sincere communication uh, both ways, that we can always... Uh, look forward to finding a better world. Uh, I'm committed to that, and I can see there are a lot of people in this world committed to it with me. So, bravo, everybody. Uh, I love you all. Pause. Universe. So, uh, this is weird. It's 123.23, and it is 1232 time. Hello, been a while. And I would say that's kind of a lot of pressure to live up to. Thanks, universe. Twelve thirty-two here on the twenty-third. Oh, January. One thing I have. Well, actually, I'm a little tired, but I'm. Not, I mean, I, I got plenty of energy for this, and I've been, I've been prepping a little bit for this, if not a lot bit. I've been prepping a little bit for three days, so like. The last hour plus a couple hours in the last couple days. Because I feel like we're at... This is a, a critical moment for that which is in you, in you, dormant and ignored. Well, I'm here to encourage you to start seeing the urgency of the situation and start thinking about finding a purpose with your life and who you are above and beyond maybe where you've been so far. And I'm not here to judge or to prescribe or to uh, chastise or admonish or reprehend or, well, I am here to congratulate, but there will never be an idea from me that you fucked up. The reason your life sucks is because you fucked up. I don't even care if really the entire galaxy stood back behind me and we all voted one or no, and we said, yeah, she fucked up. Uh, okay, I still wouldn't claim it because that just doesn't exist. You have nothing but what moment you're embracing right now plus every other moment that's about to happen to live through so whatever your life is it's tbd too big damn it because trying to have some idea of how it's all going to work out limits you to expectations that will never be the potential fulfillment you came here to achieve You'll have talked yourself out of another opportunity on an earth life to have your soul elevate in that ethereal, algorithmic, curve way that it can when you truly find who you are and make it happen here on earth. So, that's what I took three or four days off to try to sort out. Because I know I've been a little... Mm, Nutter butter, I just, uh, I don't want to alienate anyone with what seemed like, to me at least, ridiculous thoughts. Now, they're my thoughts, and I stand by them, and in fact, they're becoming the ground uh, stones of some of my true, most important values. So this isn't to say that my thoughts are uncomfortable uh, for their inherent... Uh, hmm. I don't want to make people think that because I believe that I have seen myself in past lives or alternative existences or in other ways that I seem to have gained experience, real tangible knowledge and experience through dreams and other frames of mind, well, 
I think that just means I was probably way behind in the simulation. They had to come and update my fucking character because I couldn't find my way to the library to check out the book I was supposed to check out that was going to have the information I was going to read that was going to change my life for the better. And since I missed that little side mission, and now I'm just stuck at this corner designer flaw where I'm bumping into the wall, bumping into the wall, bumping into the wall, bumping into the wall because I got the damn key, but it won't go into the goddamn lock. Well, okay, so that's kind of what my life was like. And I was, I was really good at two things. Playing a victim and then lying to myself that I was doing it. And so I thought that would be a good place to sort of square one the whole concept of, well, why the fuck does my life feel so goddamn out of sorts and off track? And I don't have any idea what to do about it. What do I even do to change my life to one that's fulfilling? Right? Well, I, I mean, I'm... <laughs> Your life? Shit, man, I can't do that for my life. How am I going to figure your life out? Okay. That's not entirely true. But again, this isn't prescriptive. I hate that word. This is not prescriptive. This is not my itinerary for how you should go live your life. This isn't even the best way, I think, to live your life, according to me, because I make a lot of mistakes all the time. So if you even think that... I have some step into this merry-go-round of gentle coasting through the rest of your life in a blissful state of whipped cream and pudding. Well, I'm working on it, but I don't have that yet. So don't hold me to that standard. Hold me to one that's closer to, all right, well, I don't see how my life can go from this to... Silver Surfer, but I see how it can go from this to better to fulfillment. Which, if Silver Surfer becomes an option on the way, I'm open. However, I do not want to be Mr. Fantastic. And really, I don't even want to be the Torch. Although I would be uh, Sue Summers? What the fuck's her name? Is that the, That's probably from Three's Company. Whatever. I would be the Invisible Girl, but I don't think you... No, actually, I wouldn't, because it's the dumbest power to have. The power to be able to sneak around and see what people are up to without them knowing it. It's like, it's like, I mean, maybe that's the final scene of a comic book, where you just take all of Google's immense power of potential surveillance and knowing everything about you that you don't want them to know, and swallow it up into your body of containment, and then poof, you become invisible and we never see you again and that's the end of the comic book. <gasps> Don't steal that idea. Actually steal that idea. It's terrible. Pause. All right. Well, I was uh, unpause. I was going to uh, I was going to work out. Fuck, I was going to do a lot of shit today. I didn't get done. But, like, get a job. But, uh, uh, I, uh, I uh, wasn't going to hit the record button until I worked out, and I promised myself I rec would record on the 22nd, because I'd had a long enough break and had enough shit to say. So, late to my own recording, I just now finished my workout, and, uh, well, shit, man, I could use a shower, I know that, and, uh, what, uh, what, um, well, let's, let's not totally waste these 45 seconds. The, um... The Milgram experiment. <clears throat> Has everyone seen that? Yes, I assume so. If not, yes, go look at it right now and be better for your understanding of human frailty. Uh, if you don't see that in any given life circumstance, you can fall into the role of that which is quote-unquote evil, and uh, and unforgivable, and do it without even really realizing that you're playing that role, which is why it's all forgivable. And 
throw the greatest world demagogues you can throw at me, but they're nothing compared to the ones we're dealing with right now. You know what I mean, CIA? CIA, are you listening to this one? You can't be. Uh -huh. I mean, I know the Mossad is. And MI6, if they, uh, if they're listening to this, then that just proves British culture is lower than I thought it was. But, so the only one that could possibly be listening to this would be the CIA. Hmm, all right. Let's face it. In America, it could be the local police. In America, it could be the DEA. In America, it could be Citibank. In America, it could be the IRS. In America, it could be Hillary Clinton. Probably not Bill, though. He got other things to do. No Jeffrey Epstein joke necessary, because y'all thought it already. Um, hell, it could be Jeffrey Epstein, if we're being honest. Um, it could be, well, isn't he Mossad? We already know the Mossad's listening. Well, the Mossad grandmother's group would be the tier of interest that this would be funneled down to. So, and there's some scrappy and particular females in that group of a specific pedigree. So I'm not dismissing them like their eighth place slotting has been done so by their countrymen. No grandma. Me amo. Oh, wait, that's Italian and Spanish. No grandma. Uh, Shalom? Is that, is that in the neighborhood? Okay. On to... Well, who else could be listening in America? Well, your neighbor could be listening. Uh, your roommate. Your wife. Your husband. Um, or they could have stopped listening to you a long time ago. Because you're a dick. And you're the kind of dick that if the Milgram experiment were going on, you'd probably be buzzing me and telling me, it's okay if he dies. It's okay. Just hit the buzzer. Pause. Unpause. You know what I haven't done in a while? Shower gag. Pause. Unpause. I should totally take that out. But in some sort of need to embarrass myself, I'm going to leave it in. But I wasn't in the shower, just so we're clear. This is maybe explicit content, but only because of my language. Pause. Unpause. Well, and my subject matter and my recollection stories and various other things make this explicit content, but never my nakedness in the shower. Otherwise, yeah, mostly all the time. Ah. Uh, okay, so naked jokes and shower jokes. We just decided no longer need to be in this recording uh, project. So we will officially let those go down the drain. Ha! Okay, that's the last sink joke, too. No more sink jokes. But I might use the phrase, go down the drain. But that cliche is in my probably 11, 12-year-old version of myself pretty heavily. So if that version of myself pops up, it might say down the drain. One thing we can determine about how much sleep and weed I've had since the last time I was recording, about eight hours ago, is I am stoned and energetic. Always a good combination for me, never a good combination for you. But since I had to re-listen to what I had recorded all the way to the shower baloney um, to figure out what the fuck to do with this huge card full of notes, well, the first thing I have to say is, in my defense, it was Invisible Girl, and I had just reread the first 114 episodes of the X-Men. Episodes? How about editions? How about... <laughs> Have I gone so video that I forgot what to call a comic book? That's awesome. At any rate, having plowed my way through 114 uh, uh, issues of the X-Men, the uncanny ones, 
the ones where they start off in suits that look like what do those original X Men uh, uh, uniforms look like? Especially the Beast. At any rate, well, the Fantastic Four have a cameo at some point, and she's Invisible Girl. She was Invisible Girl until the '80s or something, and then she became Invisible Woman. And I'm not even sure that's official. It's got to be, though. Come on. If that hasn't changed, what the fuck? It's not like she was 11. But uh, Sue Storm, who I called Sue Summers, who was, in fact, on Three's Company. So at least when my brain malfunctions, it malfunctions in a way that it's gone into a coherent ring of some semblance of truth. Although I bet if I went and watched uh, Three's Company, your Sue would be Suzanne or something. Huh? I'm kidding. Fuck, man. Of course she's Suzanne Summers. She had the fucking thigh master. We all know who Suzanne Summers is. At least if you're 50. Uh, okay. Personal ranting over. Wait, did we get through the other note? Let's see. Invisible girl, not woman. And don't steal that idea implies intellectual property. No? Oh, well, yeah. Do we really want to go through that right now? Kind of a lot to talk about. I did not have the energy, apparently. Obviously, more than apparently. Okay, those are my notes from what I had to say about the last 10 minutes of this recording, so I think we're clear there. But I don't know if I really uh, got the Milgram experiment. Is the experiment where uh, authority telling you to do something and then encouraging you that it's fine that you do it leads people to do horrific things. And... Uh, incrementally adjusting their uh, willingness to go against their better moral soul self uh, is rather, s it's scary how many people just go with clearly inflicting pain on someone they have no idea who they are or any of their circumstances other than they're on the other side of that wall. And they're screaming every time I push this button. Push it again. Huh? Push it again. Bzzz. It's fucked up. And it's fucked up. Yet, no one in there is a bad person, with the possible exception of the guy in the white coat saying, push that button. Everyone in there is a victim of circumstance in which they're managing a set of variables the best they can with what they got and what they think they're going to have to deal with next. And if you are the kind of human who has gotten through life without regretting any of your behaviors or actions or influences therein, well, <laughs> oh, who are you, Winnie the Pooh? I mean, seriously, obviously you're not human. Maybe you're Tigger. Or uh, what was the Eeyore? Nah, you're not Eeyore. You'd be bitching about something. Wasn't he the complaining donkey? Okay. Haven't read or seen anything to do with Winnie the Pooh in a long, long time. So, again, don't hold it against me. When my brain gets elastic and has a trampoline party, there's nothing I can do about it except apologize if I'm out of control. Which, dun 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 if we were something like Entertainment Tonight, would have been exactly the kind of transition that would lead to the control group. All right. So I was trying to think. I owe the world this because half of my interaction and interest in this recording endeavor and project comes from international community at large, which I fucking love. That's so awesome. So awesome. First, because Americans are becoming my least favorite people on the planet. And second, because that makes everybody else cooler. So, hello world. Buenos dias. Bonjour. No, bon voie. What? How do you say hi? Bon. Fuck. Uh, bonjour? No. Hello. Hola, France. Uh... I'll, I'll get better at this. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'll get a lot better at this. I'm going to learn how to say hello, 
country of correct pronunciation in the correct pronunciation of the native language as closely as I can, as often as I remember. And in so doing, I promise, if anybody gives me feedback as to how to improve that, I will make it better until it is approved by the native speakers of the country. Because if we're going to draw lines on a map and all speak different languages to separate us and make us not a community of worldwide goodness, well, the best step I can say toward that still doesn't matter, you're my homo sapien sapien brethren, is to learn how to say hello to you in your language. So, there is a good thing for me to work on this year. What, 192 countries? Well, no, fuck, that's, I think it's 208. Ah, that's how many bones are in the body, right? Who knows, in this universe, I haven't looked that fact up. Could have mandela its way to something. Like, 88. What? 88 bones in my body? How am I standing up? Well, not because of my control group. Because they would make me sit down and shut the fuck up or get to work. But have a buoyant moment of self-reflection? No time for that. The control group does not encourage buoyant moments of self-reflection. So when we talk about the control group, actually, international community, I will get to, I think, the most valid question I've gotten yet. And frankly, I've thought about this, so I think I have an answer. And that question is, why, if the people of America are all pretty reasonable and kind... Why is everything in your government so fucked up when you have elections that can change all that? Why don't you take advantage? Okay. That, unfortunately, is an enormous question. Because taking advantage of the opportunity to change regime in America has almost been completely hijacked by the people in power. That process here no longer really exists. And that's the issue. Because the people who give a shit, who care to do better for the world, have no chance of ascending into the positions where they can be influential enough to achieve that goal. I will get back to that after we talk about the control group so we can speak about why a lot of that is actually impossible to, to disentangle. And... Having successfully said disentangle, I'm going to go get some water. Unpause. Hey, and while we do this part, I just wanted to share, I wanted to say that if, uh, if you started a New Year's resolution that was, say, to lose weight or exercise, or both, which really, how are you doing one without the other? Um, maybe you didn't want to lose weight, you just want to get in better shape, so you're just exercising, you don't give a shit about your weight. I get that, I get that, I get that. And maybe you're losing weight, but you live in a wheelchair, so there is no such thing as exercise other than upper body, and that's something that you've already incorporated into your life and doesn't need to accelerate. I get that, I get that. Because there are always exceptions to the rule. Always. In fact, every single one of us is an exception to the rule. In our own wonderful way. Like a fingerprint. Why do you think we have fingerprints? The, um, the point of my other, ah, oh, fuck, have I already lost it? No, I haven't. Um, a change of lifestyle is not easy. In fact, for most people, it really never happens at all. Not intentionally. And in many ways, there are routines that, if you saw they were cycles of energy you were just sort of looping in, you might change for your better forever and off you'd go with a more fulfilling sense of life. Like self-love. But exercise and your current weight are things that really do have an impact on how much your whole life can be fulfilling. Which is not 
terrible or unfortunate, really, until you're in the sedentary mushroom fungi under shady spot lifestyle that makes you think, well, oh, that's not something I want to do. So get the fuck off my porch. I get it. I get it. I once weighed 200 something pounds because all I did was smoke weed, watch TV, and eat hostess prepackaged food items. I don't know if I can call them food. Hostess prepackaged items. And <clears throat> and it was the one real time that I said I don't give a fuck, 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 I don't give a fuck. Oh my fucking God, where am I now? What the fuck have I done with my weight? And I currently weigh, uh, whatever I go in there and weigh myself, it'll be between 157 and 162. And it's not even like I tried to weigh 200 plus pounds. And when I got to the 190s, when I got to the 180s, that was new. I'd never weighed 180 anything. I'd never weighed 190 anything. And I'd never weighed 200 anything. And so when those benchmarks were getting hit, it was always a revelation of, holy crap, now what do I weigh? Holy crap, now what do I weigh? Holy crap. And... It was the last physical, self-abusive phase I had to get out of. From there forward, I've at least, if I wasn't eating very well, I was definitely exercising. And if I wasn't exercising regularly, I was trying to keep my nutrition high. And why I wasn't always committed to both? Because it's fucking hard, man. It is hard to stay committed to the best you physically especially if the best you manifesting in other arenas is also being denied. It's a lot easier to just coast at D-level work for everything than it is to have a bunch of D's and C's in your life and one A. Is how I used to think. And not that I used to think this, it's just how I would fall into patterns of who I was. Um, and what I now see is the only way to have a life filled with A's and B's is to start taking the A's that are there to be had and then letting the momentum that creates for itself help boost your other performances wherever it is that you need help, whether it be career aspirations or romantic aspirations or communication with your family or motivation to do work or motivation to become a better you. That all involves your physical body feeling good to you. It feels good to feel my upper arms to me right now. It's a little sexy for me even. Seriously, that bicep is just tight. And yet, that's not really what I mean. I can, oh, that's not quite my six pack yet. I'm working on it. I'm not going to get there at the end of January though, I don't think. I did have a sedentary start to the year that set me back. And Disappointing though that can be, I've started to realize that whatever goal I initially set for myself is going to be the absolute most perfect execution model if I could pull it off all the way to the end with no flaw. Because I'll never aspire to do anything less than that. However, 100% of my attempts at that execution thus far in something that has long-term impact and, and necessity to uh, to conclude, has been less than 100%. So now what I do is I still push that out as my initial itinerary for whatever I'm about to attempt. But now I just put a note at the bottom, actual execution TBD, and realize that there's a whole bunch of, fuck, I don't want to do this anymore that I'm not building into my plan. 
I'm building into my plan some sort of taking a pill every morning that makes me think the only thing I want to do is make sure that I get that fucking itinerary shit fulfilled today. I can have that attitude every morning I wake up and I still will fail on days, whether it be out of consequence of, of activities that go wrong or just I don't fucking get around to it, nor do I feel like it, nor do I give a shit today. Which I know there are going to be many of, if not weeks of. So, rather than giving up on my itinerary entirely, I now build in, what's that probably going to be on this 10-week plan? Four weeks of fucking around and feeling sorry for myself. So I just know that this is really a 14-week plan. Now, if I get it done in 10, that's amazing. And frankly, probably a little out of line with my true character. I probably did some things a little too aggressively and committedly than I should have to get that far that quickly. Did I do it in 12? Well, honestly, that's probably the sweet spot. Because it's a significant gap from where I would have allowed myself to still feel like I got it done on time. And yet I didn't push myself so hard that I turned 10 weeks worth of 12 weeks worth of activity into 10. And then if I don't get it done by week 14, well, I have to ask myself, that's 40% extra time on a project that matters to me. Does it not inspire me enough to have whatever breaks I've given myself to this point that amount to a significant time off? Does that not end my agreement with myself that I'm ready to go here? Do I need four weeks of vacation and every 10 weeks I work? Well, yeah, fucking A, man. That'd be great. I mean, that'd be great. <laughs> Can we set that up right now? Was that an option? Uh, R2-D2 says yes. Pause. Unpause. Pause. Uh, unpause. That text definitely got me a little distracted. It's only been five minutes, though. So I do remember what I was talking about, and that is these lifestyle changes, things like I want to get in better shape, I want to lose weight, I want to play an instrument, I want to learn to cook, I want to, uh, what, uh, uh, ride my bike, drive my car less, um, are always going to challenge you to decide they're still worth it. And some of these challenges will be the legitimate, well, I've made this kind of gain, so how much more do I give a shit to keep doing this element of, say, losing weight? or exercise specifically. Um, and there can be some of that, you know. Once you can play Hotel California on the guitar, that's really all you ever wanted to do with a guitar, and it's taken you six weeks to get there. So maybe it's time to go back to fucking Call of Duty. Well, maybe it is. But if you want to learn to play the guitar, six weeks is certainly not enough. And you knew that getting into it. So, if you wanted to learn to play Hotel California, bravo. That guitar goes on Craigslist and on to the next goal, go you. Um, but that six-week, that's enough for me? Even if you put that down and think, I was going to learn to play enough guitar that I could pick a guitar up at a party and entertain my guests level... Well, Hotel California will entertain your one friend who actually was listening while everybody else was like, I didn't know you played the guitar. Well, I don't. I just play Hotel California. Oh, uh, where was the keg? Is that outside? Oh, it's outside. Okay, no, I'm going to go get a beer, but enjoy the guitar. And I say this because maybe you're going through life seeing how many things you can feel like you accomplished and building the biggest possible list of all time. Can I bowl a game over 200? Once you've done it, you never bowl again. Can I learn to play Hotel California on the guitar? Once you get there, you never do it again. Never pick up another guitar. Well, that might be a really rewarding life. It really might. You can look back and say, holy shit, <coughs> I roller skated backward. I went off that ski jump, parachuted, can play Hotel California on the guitar, and hand me that harmonica if you're down for a little Bojangles. 
Well, that's all I know. I can't play anything besides Bojangles. But I'm dying, man. I'm just looking back on everything I got done here in life. So quit fucking asking me to play the drums. Unless you have a seven-piece drum kit in which I'm happy to bang out a little sweet child of mine. Um, wow, am I high. Oh, my God, am I high. Woo, boss. I'm boss. So that's why I say, if you really want to learn to play the guitar, here's what I would do being someone who's in the position that is exactly that. I have a guitar. I want to learn to play it. I've never really done anything except fucking break the strings and buy the wrong ones and then put those in and fuck something up a little bit and then go get the right ones and put those in and I haven't touched it since. So my guitar experience is very much um, maintenance and uh, and um, abuse than it is musical inspiration thus far. So there could be a whole lot of the world telling me, don't get distracted by the guitar while you still want to gain and improve on piano skills lost long ago. Okay, universe, maybe that's true. Maybe I'm ignoring the piano and being distracted by thoughts of two instruments simultaneously playing the guitar and the piano with my feet. But no, that's not necessarily true because... All I've really done is fucked up my attempts to integrate the guitar into my life. To really set that up, I would want to say daily playing, daily playing, daily. It's a fucking guitar. We're not talking about going on a seven mile run. Daily playing, inside by the way, daily playing and that improves every other week as to how much time I'm playing. At first, 10 minutes a day. That's fine. 10 minutes a day will leak into 20-minute sessions when I feel like it, but will leave me 10 minutes. That's enough guitar for today when I really am not in the mood to do it. By week three, now I'm doing 15-minute sessions. By week five, I'm doing, as it were, as it were, as it were, until you're doing a half hour a day by the time you get to the end of 12 weeks. And if at that point you haven't caught a little bit of energy that this is something I really am enjoying, then good for you for having given it this much of an attempt to integrate into your life. But realistically, spending another six, seven, ten months on the guitar only to put it away at that point is not going to enhance your life. You're going to feel something connect with you, like the creation of your own music. Or you're not. And if that is something you knock off your list as, well, that isn't going to change my level of fulfillment here on earth. You can ask yourself if you just picked the wrong instrument and maybe you should go buy a harmonica. Or you can go try golf or canoeing or whatever else is on your list. But keep firing away at your list of things that have piqued your interest without you having done anything about Fulfilling them in reality here on A675309 Earth. That's one way to never be all that disappointed in why aren't you getting anything done? Why aren't you feeling like you're never expanding your life? Well, plan with intent some things to get into your life, make room for them, commit to them, and see them through. And then forgive the fuck out of yourself when you give a little momentum back and decide... I'm not going to do that today. As much as I say daily playing, it's impossible to think of myself going 84 days without missing a few, if not a week. Because as soon as you miss one, missing two is a fucking breeze. Missing three is a little tougher because now you fucking realize that now you're kind of giving up. Missing four, now you kind of have to talk yourself that whole day about whether or not you are giving up. And by day five, You can't deny that there is a legitimate conversation that today is the day if you don't fucking do this thing, you've given up. And then by day six, you realize, was giving up such a bad thing? Is there 5% of me that still thinks I should go back and get this thing done? And by day seven, you've gone a whole week and you think, well, if I've gone a week without it, well, then fuck me. Even if on day seven or day 11 or day 13 or 15 or 17, you decide... I really fucked that up. I really wish I had stayed with that. 
Well, then go right back to it that day and say, if I can play today and tomorrow, then that proves maybe I still want to do this. Don't expect yourself to get right back onto your 10-week program, especially if you've taken multiple days to a week off. At that point, be very forgiving of yourself. Two days on, one day off. Another day off, one day on for sure, or you're just not into it. But don't give up on yourself on something that you just gave up on because in the first three to six weeks of honeymoon bliss of this is something I'm going to change about myself and forever be, eh, yeah, you might get that far. A momentum that is just, I want a new me. But eventually the old me will say, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. We miss Call of Duty. We miss sitting on the couch. We miss Cheetos. And we miss not going out and exercising in the fucking rain. Okay, yeah. Those are all things that are going to make you quit. All of it. Whatever makes you lose momentum is legit and is certainly there and going to derail you at some point. I don't care if you're the most committed motherfucker in the world. You won't be perfect in your execution of a new lifestyle. You will work for it. You will reward yourself for getting integration progress as you go, and you will forgive yourself for all the backsliding and inertia overcoming that is necessary to truly become a better version of yourself, to be a wider execution of your skill set, to be a more in touch with your reality engagement of your meat suit requires you to do some work to integrate your meat suit and your mind into a new frame of better life. And whatever it is about yourself that you know you're letting go and not attending to with full commitment, just start to improve a little bit. I'm already feeling guilty about the lack of commitment to my better health and exercise that I showed in the first half of January. So I could either say, well, then I'll flip the script and have a perfect second half, or I can say, we're going to use the second half to have a better February, and then we'll hold ourselves accountable to just having a better February. Since I really quit the first half of January, all I need to do is maintain some momentum all through February to feel like it was a better month. And if I do that, I promise you by better weather in March, I'll want to be on a more exercise specific and committed routine. So I see how this will all work out for me so long as I forgive myself for not being able to overachieve and get an A plus on something I'm in full control of. And all that is necessary for me to get an A plus is for me to do it at my absolute best. Yeah, okay, do I want to commit to this at my absolute best? Because that's all the energy I'll have. Everything else will have to be B-level material at best. Well, no, I don't. I want to pass this, and I want to maintain it, but I don't need to prove I'm the best in the world at this. It's not that important to me. It's just important to me that I get better and more physically fit as much as I can until maintaining it and staying from gaining weight and getting lethargic is really all that's left between me and my health routine. So anyone who's committed to something as a lifestyle change, I know is struggling this week to maintain it, if not already have quit. Well, here you are still in January. In fact, you got a whole week in which you can just start to gain back the momentum you had to change your lifestyle at the beginning of the month. And then just ask yourself for a more consistent February. It's the shortest month of the reason for, or of the year for this reason. Because all of us who have fucked up our January routine of a new life get the shortest month of the year to try to correct that course. That's a mental win. Don't tell me you haven't thought that shit. Pause. Unpause. Damn, that is... We haven't even gotten to the control stuff. We haven't talked about the logjam that is America's governmental system hijacked. Ugh. Pause. Hmm. I'm buzzed. Damn, I definitely took too much time off. 
there's a lot on here to talk about. I mean, like, a couple of hours, at least. Shit. Um, all right, I'm not going to do a two-hour recording. In fact, uh, and, and yet we're going to keep going here. We're not done. Because I understand there is nothing you can do about the attention span you've developed in, say, 20 to 25 years of life. If you're sitting in your late teens, early 20s, your patterns of behavioral attention are developed. They aren't set in stone, but they are developed. And whatever burst attention patterning you've accommodated in a world full of things bursting to get your attention is who you are. And so long form audio communication soliloquies where I'm eating wheat checks straight out of the bag is not your thing because you just aren't built for it any more than you're built for novels. And I used to think you had missed, you were missing something out. You were missing out on something. Um, not because of the wheat checks. That's like eating cat food. But you were missing out on something in terms of the richness and hmm, reward that comes from being immersed in a novel of your own choosing or not of your own choosing, of your own discovery in some other capacity to have yourself and the words on the page be the only thing that really matters. All I want to do is read this next chapter is, <laughs> well, it is no different, I suppose, than wanting to just see what this guy's next video looks like. It's a connection, a real connection of somebody through a medium in which they aren't here, but their power of representation is moving you. And it took me until I was in my late 40s and 50s to say, wait a second, no human being goes through this experience without the same basic fulfillment desires and then models them the best they can in the circumstances they're given. To look at anybody with the sort of, well, it's too bad you can't do it my way, set of, uh, of boundaries is a huge mistake on the person who is looking back at a world more and more not in touch with theirs. I don't know that there are too many mm, 40 and 60 and 50 somethings that ever lived through a human being experience who can say the world today is significantly different than the one I was 10 in and mean it more than the generation that's here right now. And so anything this generation does to try to think about its adjustment into the generation that is and will become, is ludicrous. We have, we have whatever nostalgic connection to a world without fucking, with rotary phones for fuck's sake, that is dying and is already ready to be extinct. It no longer can even be accessed by a world, by anyone born in this century. We are nothing but tales of yore, as much as speaking of King Arthur. The world is leap years ahead of itself in capacity that we would have envisioned as children. And the ways that it's stuck feel as familiar to us as the ways it'll be stuck for the generation that is currently too busy looking at their phone to listen to this as it will be for that generation of medieval knights who are fighting for the honor of 
Queen Guinevere? Is that the right queen? Or was it Matilda? The teenage witch? My point is, we're going to have the same struggles in our composition of humanity, one-on-one, -on -one community, civilization, as we've always had. Because we make our problems for ourselves. Especially the ones in our own lives. And so, what I'm hoping here is that if your new year just already feels too much like last year, that's okay. What'd you expect? The calendar to be some sort of magic, invisible barrier into a brand new wonderland of whipped cream and pudding that's all good for you and makes you want to exercise? Yeah, that's kind of what I wanted. And it didn't happen, so I'm left with fucking cold, damn January 23rd motherfucking morning. Where I literally am so cold peeing in my bathroom because I didn't put on anything for foot protection that I'm dancing around thinking, God damn it, what am I doing? As you can imagine. And that doesn't feel like last year because I don't remember doing that last year. But having to clean up after myself in the bathroom, yeah, I do remember doing that last year. And I'm pretty sure I remember doing that every other year I've ever been here. And I'm going to expect to do that every year going forward. So live with my dancing bathroom morning pee routine, can I? Disappointing though it still was. But live with the idea of giving up on cleaning my bathroom because I'm no longer into that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I've got standards for myself that are higher than that. And that application of life is all there is. What standard of application are you willing to commit to yourself, given the version of yourself that you currently live with? The, le the reason not everybody in this planet walks around in the best physical condition they can get themselves in is because that's a lot of work and time. And not everyone gives a shit at all, even remotely, to achieve at that level with that kind of time commitment and the amount of work involved. But all of us should have some level of physical activity commitment to ourselves to make sure that we like our own engagement body-wise, meat-suit-wise, with gravity and the particles of nature around us in the way that we're here to experience. You don't want to let life become so sedentary that you no longer are physically capable, capable of doing something you really want to do. And that's about all you need to care about. Unfortunately, nutrition is a whole different thing because you are force-fed a world of influential messaging that says, don't worry about dealing with making yourself a healthy dinner when you can just pick this up on the way home and probably spend less money. By figuring out how to sell you the absolute least uh, financially, uh, no, the dude, um, I wonder if they, everything, well, think about this. All the corporations care about is your bottom line, is the bottom line in profit and their amount of uh, revenue generated therein. So whatever they can do to reduce the cost of your food that you're picking up for five ninety nine dollars including a beverage and uh, chicken pot pie, whatever deal they're enticing you with, they've cut every possible corner on the uh, value of the food itself. Not necessarily its nutritional value. That might just coincidentally not be affected, but on the cost of that food. So you're eating the lowest cost version of whatever they can do. If they can make that meat 60% more fluffy by injecting it with the tears of... of fourth graders, they probably figured out a way to do that. So 
whatever game you're willing to accept that they're playing, they're playing it on you. And the only way to get off that cycle of uh, easiness, because the only reason you do it is because it's easier, and you don't have the time, but that's because your life is disorganized enough that you don't have the time to even feed yourself. Well, that's just a decision that you have allowed yourself to make. If you're making that decision, then carving out time for a 20-minute walk every day would be a great decision as a counterbalance to the fact that this is also a necessary part of my life is to eat this food that isn't good for me. Instead of controlling what I put in my body by preparing my own food. These are decisions that in my 20s I couldn't have even conceived of thinking were worth making. Fuck you. I'll eat what I want every day. If I feel like making a steak, I'll make a steak. If I feel like making a fucking salad, I'll probably do that. But until then, give me a fork. I want to eat my chicken pot pie. Okay, here's your fork. I'm all of the impulses toward leave me alone and just let me be on my daily impulse as I want to be. I've done that better than anybody and I've done it more committed than anybody other than somebody who might be 55. And since I'm only 54, and my dad's about to be 84, my friend James just turned 55, and my guardian angel on Friday will be 59, the year before you'll be 60. Well, for all those January Aquarius birthdays galore, wait, is the 20th Aquarius? It might not be. But the 25th and the 26th are. And to both the Aquarius Turner birthdays that I know, well, uh, age is just a number, as both of you prove, almost better than any other entity in the universe. Because I cannot name a person at 84, nor a person at 59, that look any better than the two who are turning those ages this week. So, guardian angel and omnipresent overbearing father figure in my life, happy birthday. Unpause. Well, happy birthday to you indeed, because it has been almost an hour. And I have yet to talk about the control group or the stalled election conundrum of representative government we're stuck with. I mean, that's just awful. I can't even expect people who are willing to pursue long format audio communications to last more than an hour. Even an hour is pushing it. So knowing that I'm one who likes to push it, Push it real good. Uh, 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 no, that's probably copyright infringement. My last thought on which to leave you, if you made it this far, number one, question everything about yourself. And number two, thank you. And number three, hmm, I can't imagine doing this again. So I'm going to record another episode today and maybe a third, as I look at this list, of content that... Hmm. attempts to assign proper solution channels to the biggest problems we've currently got. That we have a government that won't represent the true desires of the Republic. And that we have a fractured community of people too isolated and, uh, and um, wrought with individualism to coalesce to fix it. And most of this is coming from messaging that tells you you're not worth it. And even if you were, you don't have the skill set to get it done. And so my reaction to all that is bullshit. We are all worth it. And we are all here with exactly the skill set to overcome the challenges in front of us. And those challenges, ominous and overwhelming though they look, are not insurmountable. They never have been, and they never will be, not for humanity who's willing to come together and face it as one.